All right, welcome back to Sands of Time. Build an aviary. Actually kind of tempting. Um, that's our that's our next thing, right? Hold on. Yeah, we got Ichthy. So after Ichthy, it is, in fact, Dimorphodon is our next Jurassic species. Let me verify this. Um, I should know this. Boom. The Nemurian, the second subdivision of the Jurassic period, Dimorphodon. Yep. All right. Well, let's do that then. Do we need... Did I ever research this or not? Okay, yes. Okay, cool. Well, let me get this laid out. Injured scientist taking a pretty big hit on medical bills. I probably worth taking the publicity rating penalty here, but let's treat our employees nicely. So, uh, this is the next two exhibits, the Dimorphodon Aviary, and then our exhibit after that will be this one here that I've just kind of started laying out some geometry on, and we'll flesh it out when it comes time to actually, you know, use it. For now, it can just be this. Um, we have Nothosaurus, Social Humble, Loner, Loner Humble. So we have to get rid of that because that's more dominant. So we can't hatch that one. Okay. Three more Noths. That's fine. It gives us what? Seven? Six? Six. That seems fine. We did the Herreras already. I believe we started digging up Dimorphodon. Oh yeah, we actually have fossils to process. 98%. Wow. Really? Brutal. Well, whatever. All right. Uh Three more of you. The red one's nice. I guess they're all the red one. Yeah, that's right. Because I spe specifically picked a pattern. Of course. Pulkrana. Yes. Pulkrana is usually a good pattern. Great Sandy. Death Valley. Death Valley. Okay. Our, so our alpha has a twin. Well, at least there's some fungi there. Still not worthwhile. Still very unpleasant. So I could put these two on the processing here. I might as well do it. Because Demorphodon's done. They need to rest. So, like, why not? Um, and then, yeah, Ichthy. So, Ichthyosaurus. Obviously, we can't do this till after the rest is done, but we can at least uh, take a look. Yeah, so we've got the pattern we want, the colors. Just need to set up the alpha. Which I guess is 75, 75. Probably not worth pushing. Actually, can we even do 11? Definitely not worth pushing to 12, but 11 might not even work. Yeah, we could do 11. It's on 3, though. I want to do it on 2. Twenty-five fifty. Yeah, that's... That's not great. We'll do it... We'll do it, uh... 50, 75, 11 genetics. Oh, shoot. Build an aviary of at least two domes. I didn't even look at the fucking contract. Yeah. I totally missed that. Aw, oh, fuck. Can I just... do this? Fuck it. Is this even worth the money? I already clicked them down. Yeah, no, that's actually profitable. Unless I have to build all the infrastructure, too. In which case, that sucks. Um... I'm pretty sure I've done a Dimorphodon aviary like this before, so. Work on that last assignment. 
I, I, I just want the one tile one just to have it be nice and round. I kind of wish you could like just scale the existing aviary up instead of having to attach them. It'd be nice to have the option because you can't really get a nice round one unless it's only a single tile. You can combine, you know, a big set around the sides, but then it still has the like the lobes. It doesn't end up being perfectly round. It it has those, you know, extensions off of it because of the way they're combined. Um kind of like how the lagoon here ends up being, you know, a hexagon instead of a circle when you combine a bunch together. Okay, so we could should we get the hmm hold on. I guess we'll do the Demorphodons first. Because, like, you're making more money if you've got more animals, right? So, like, it doesn't make sense to double back. Uh, we should get the contract, though. In case that's relevant. Hatch modified, maybe? Seven genetically modified. Oh, perfect. Actually, fantastic. So, for Dimorphodon, we're going to use the variant. 2022, the little guy. Random desert skin. Pattern has been selected as Pulkrana. Lifespan is irrelevant. Thirst is relevant. So, too social, too humble, and we're done. I'll probably hatch everything. And just see, um, see if it's actually going to work. Oh, shoot. You know what? I didn't check for water. Oh, no. Do I have to rebuild this whole fucking thing now? Why would you do this to me? Why am I not able to fucking put water in here? Terrain constraints from this? Terrain constraints over here? What's the problem exactly? Wait. Okay, kinda. Kinda. So maybe if I delete these, I can sneak it in. The one tile aviaries definitely work. So let's just move these, I guess. I do distinctly feel like Aviary's got more finicky though at some point. It's like after some update or something. All right. Just, uh, okay, sort of, kind of, are we able to fit a fucking feeder? No, nowhere near. Oh, you know what? Maybe it works, but if you're, but not if you're doing the, the viewing gallery on the one side. So... Can't move this because we've already started it. Can we are we allowed to put down a second one? Seems like it. I think I know how to fix this. Or try to at least. We'll just, you know, spend more money. Uh, okay, so we'll hatch them and then we'll delete uh, the one they hatch from. And they can come out of the second one, in theory. Apparently I have to let it build before I can assign to it, which kind of makes sense, but is a little annoying. Great. Okay. 
No, it's only five. We did get an alpha. Master Incubation Generalist. It was 11 for the Ichthys, so we can't do anything with them until these guys are done. One minute, eight minutes on the bonus. I believe that probably works out just fine. Um, well, this, this aesthetic here with this pathing now is kind of ruined, unfortunately. Because this, this is going to be deleted. I guess we just leave it there as a reminder of, you know, the original design. I could tighten it up. We could push this back all the way to the aviary now and then tighten up the uh the path around here the fence around there maybe all right good luck little buddies we need to sort out your shit. we'll delete you Oh, we can already push the water in. Fantastic. Okay, so. We're going to try. Keep it inside the aviary, more or less. Oops. Wrong fish, this fish. Okay, well we should be we should be perfectly good. I just need my little dudes. Missing open space, sand area, but the alpha is currently a nobody, so that's understandable. All right, we've got Death Valley Pulcrana Demorphodon. Obviously, they'll all be Pulcrana. But yeah, I think uh, as far as Terrasaur wing patterns go, this guy's got one of the better ones. That's the Sonoran, which is just a bit more red. That's all. Great. Sandy, Sonoran, Death Valley. Okay, yeah, so we've seen all of them. Ugly little shit. Alright, we're just gonna believe... Oh, wait. No, yeah, four, four is still not, not the right one. So we're just gonna believe they'll probably be fine once the alpha is sorted out. And ignore their ads. Alright, so... Uh, let's get those ichthys for that contract. Ten and eleven. I guess I could have held the other guy back for an expedition. It's fine. Shops are full. Eighty-nine on food. Ninety-nine on restroom. Let's put this back here. And then for power, we put it right there. This was towards the path. Uh, eyeball it. Doesn't have to be perfect, I guess. It's fine. Sure. Do I want the dinosaurs to fight? No. But do they want to fight? For some, it is what they were born for, what they live for, and what they're willing to die for. The Morphodons sorting that their thing out, maybe? Perfect. Humans have. 
So, yeah, this might be the entire group, but five is above social limits. That's all well and good. I'm perfectly happy with that. We're never going to get the bonus on this contract because I have wasted too much time. Not paid enough attention to the eggs. Social humble, weak. Social humble, small appetite. Fucking nice. So we can hatch you. We can hatch aggressive intel. 35, 20. Also can't be hatched, so we only get four here. Yeah, three minutes ain't gonna fly. Next! Dinosaur. Don't have the research for it, because it is Cryolothosaurus. In the Pleans Bakian fucking subdivision of the Jurassic. You don't quote my pronunciation on that. Uh, that is there. So we still need, okay, we got a couple of research nodes blocking us. Here's what we're going to do we're going to skip ahead because I know we should have Segi. Second. So we'll dig that up. That's just a one logistics, cheap, easy. This is this is out of sequence, but we'll add it to the park in the proper order. Doesn't matter what order we dig it up. Alright, one storm later and a accompanying power outage, we're finally able to get these Zigbees out. Like way behind schedule, but whatever. We've basically seen all these skins before, so there's no real reason to go through them. Thirteen ichthyosaurs. Fourteen ichthyosaurs. Alright, looks like they're pretty good. We can't ignore them. Alright, so now we're gonna make the proper push for Cryolophosaurus. So we need to knock out the Baryonyx research real quick. And then everybody's gonna have to have a break after that, basically, so we might as well uh Take care of some of this. And send both of you on break simultaneously as well. To morph it and a few extra amenities was enough to get us three stars and get some more research unlocks here. Um, I went ahead and put in a medium and then decided that like smalls are fine too. The medium covers completely the smalls don't but like the difference is essentially having an amenity in the negative versus not so it's better in the short term to go with the smalls at least there's the rest twelve that's exactly that I guess we see if uh sega is actually done no so then we just go back here and finish that up so i guess we can do sag pretty quickly after cryo all right fossils this should finish up little guy a little unfortunate for uh for this guy's role as potentially a nice starter dinosaur in challenge mode uh he takes multiple digs and multiple extractions for whatever reason he's got a billion fossils Like, this is almost two full extractions to finish the se the Sega genome. Very weird. Don't know why it's like that. Um, so that can be you. Ooh, Antarctica? Yeah. Which, I mean, I guess we actually need him for that, too, then. Okay, uh, well, we'll put you on a rest and we'll just weigh it. Oh, I was going to show my exhibits. Uh, yeah, so I decorated this a little bit. We've got cycads, we've got ginkgos, Jurassic vegetation. I threw some seed plants in here just to add something a little different to it. Um, kind of going with a, try for like a Jurassic oasis, basically. Nice little watering hole tucked in the hills, that sort of thing. I think it's, I think I like it conceptually. I think it's a nice, nice little basic exhibit. Not too complicated. Just enough elevation differences to like, make it look like something. I think that's good. And then I decorated the aviary a little bit. 
again pretty pretty reserved just some little rocks and small bushes and stuff in here a couple of palms in the back just to make it you know look like something plus this kind of gives you potentially like little perch points to like see the demorphodons land which you know would be cool if they actually would land on the small rocks but i've never actually seen them uh they seem to like the big rock in the background but i mean you can at least see them there it works I placed the big one first, so maybe maybe the way it works is they pick perch points and they keep returning to the same perch point. So if they like auto assign themselves to the big rock and they put small rocks in, maybe they just don't use them. Maybe we put the small ones in first, they'd use them. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how the perching shit works. I've never paid enough attention to see if the Demorphodons or any pterosaurs keep going to like the same points or something. Maybe, maybe these rocks are just too small for perch points. But literally no idea literally right as that ended you saw this guy fly in <laughs> and land on the small rock so yep they can land here uh unfortunately he's kind of on the back side of the rock which is maybe why i never saw it in here um oh well maybe we can get a nice contract here uh nope not really we'll just do this one what i like about building construction is that it requires planning and thought and I've always loved seeing things become something from nothing. I think that's what first attracted me to InGen. Sure thing, Claire. First batch of cryofossils comes with a bunch of extra shrimp and ginkgo. Well, ginkgo fossils makes sense that we have ginkgo in the exhibit then, doesn't it? Perfect. Almost like I planned that, except I really, really didn't. Um... What am I doing? You do this. You guys do this. And then we sit. Unless there's a new vaccine that's popped up randomly. Nope. Well, what do you know? Avian pox outbreak. Like, right when I asked for a new uh, vaccine to research. Um, there it is. This was not worth processing not really okay well uh good luck little listrosaurs don't get too sick and immediately afterwards the crowd fossils shrimp shrimp also uh avian pox on you know one of the few creatures in the game that's not avian lineage right kind of funny not like we gave the game many options for who to pox but like it's still pretty amusing uh yeah, we'll do you. So that, that's that got to be finished, right? Yes. Okay. Well, it's, that's all well and good. Then we can keep working on that. We can also just do large amenities, I guess. Sure. Perfect. All right. So, contract. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, we do population. It, it's always worthwhile. Uh, oh man, I managed to double it. More dinosaurs means more Not that it problems. matters. I don't think there's any way to exploit that, but that was interesting. Um, so yes, three Listrosauruses, presumably. Yep. Okay, so we do these first. Finish the contract. And then we do cry it. So in the meantime, we can, well, we can speed up at least. We can get the cryos. No, we're not done. We have a fossil left. So let's say we get them sorted out uh, in terms of genes, but no. Just do that. Which I guess means no faster incubation here in a second. But, oh well. Let's get a shumble social. I'm only going to hatch what we need for the contract, so just three there. Uh, I guess we can skip the skittish. Sure. Well, we'll still have to take one skittish, but I mean, grab the two that at least aren't. Just so there's a little less panic when the cars are there, I guess. All right, there's our little waddlers. We'll let them come out. 
our happy bounding little guys. And we'll see if we can do cryo with what we have currently. Random favorite pattern picked out Pilo Bilax. Twelve or thirteen. Twelve is our hard limit. Okay. Should be fine. Okay, well, social humble, large appetite, good enough. It'll work. A lot of money if we want four cryos. Sonoran, Great Sandy, Great Sandy, Great Sandy. I think I'll do three. Because we're close to having that money. And we got Seggy ready to go right after. Uh, I realized just kind of now, uh, we're getting decently deep into the square park. Um, so we're going to actually have to start going a little wider here. I want to keep the linearity for the timeline vibe, but like, yeah, we're going to do something. Uh, if we want the Cretaceous to be like right here, then we've got to be really careful with space. So I might... Do something. I don't think I want to change this exhibit. I like it, and it's got to be square, kind of like the way it is. So I think it's just we're going to have to compress um, some of the next stuff we put in. It should work. Number of dinosaurs. I mean, well, building an aviary actually was just the domes. So that actually... Uh, four. 700k was what that was, right? Yeah, so I mean, it's a free 300. Facilities like new buildings, restaurants, shops, not amazing, but it's workable. And I don't mean the kind for race cars. You know what I mean? Well, you really took a bite out of that last objective. I okay. Uh. You make the most sense. I'm gonna just hatch these guys and push my my guy over on uh on his crankiness, and hopefully he doesn't punish me for it. We're gonna roll that dice because I want to get these so that we can at least like if this exhibit is uh too small for the cryos, then you know I can expand it like out back this way or something maybe. But I need to like you know. It's a good thing to be working on while the guy is resting, basically, as opposed to doing it the other direction. So, uh, that finished up prereq for Gene, which I think was Appetite. Um, so now we can do Tropical Skins real quick, which we have no reason to, because we're never using these. Just kidding. That was a funny joke I just made. Um, I hope you laugh. What we can do is I saw we had, in fact, avian pox vaccine. We can't because I put people on rest because they needed to. So, never mind on that front also. Uh, next animal after Cryo and Sega. It's going to take, it's never going to feel right in my mouth. It's Seggy, damn it. It's always Seggy to me. Uh, Megalosaurus, which is up here. Then we can't do that, so yes. Okay. <laughs> Well, um, we can't do much, but we can watch Cryolophosaurs fly through the air. Yeah, well, there's our first one. Open space, water, prey. Pretty simple requirements. So, yeah, the nice purple patterns, the one we went with, I think that's the best, best look for Cryolophosaurs pretty much universally. Um, this is probably what Great Sandy Desert with that bland ass brown. Nope, that's Sonoran. Wow, they really lost the lottery. That's their Sonoran pattern, which is usually the 
the red one. It's usually the most like gaudy of the three desert patterns. Damn. Sucks to be you, I guess. What about you? That's great sandy. So that's actually better. The yellow goes well with the purple. Well, he looks like he belongs here in a desert oasis, so good. Okay, and all three have met up and linked. Their territory is fine. And yeah, these guys don't eat scavengers. So the Segi going in the same pen. Um, they are not from the same era. We're doing one from every subdivision, right? So Cryolophosaurus from Plinsbachian. Stegosaurus is from the Tuarchian, Torkian, Tuarchian, Torchian. There's no H. T O A R C I A N. Torsian, Torkian. We'll go Torkian. Um, and when we have animals that can live together that are next to each other in the geological record, we're just going to put them in the same exhibit because we wouldn't have space otherwise. So these guys, I did not assign uh, the colors already, but I picked out... Oh, right. I didn't assign them because they're new. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to do a uh, random pattern on the desert-based skins. Duh. Of course I did it that way. And, yeah, food was the new gene we unlocked because we can see now they don't have it. Apparently they're quenched normally. 50% social, too. Uh... Two, two, three. We'll keep them. We'll keep them at two. This shouldn't be an issue with like their clutch size. Yeah, eight eggs seems fine. I could do two rounds. I think I want to do two rounds because they're just little dudes. Sure, double up. And yeah, this will be a good test to see if the database is correct and Cryolothosaurus is big enough that it doesn't eat scavengers because I thought it did. I thought he was just the biggest of the, the you know, Velociraptor tier guys who eat scavengers, but apparently not. So, I don't know. I'm a little skeptical. Well, anyway, nothing's going to happen now with the storm here. I mean... We always do bigger family. Mo dinos, mo money. That's my mo, uh, so we got to clear out these guys. Uh, do we have an alpha? Yes. I guess we just slap faster on there just to get done quicker. Because they need to be completely out of here to start this contract. So if we're going to do it... This has to be done quick. I guess it would be good to make sure the cryos aren't going to eat these guys before we put all 16 in there. So just starting with the 8. Probably not a bad idea. Alright, well, this has to happen and we'll take a moment. So, Lystras are on the way, Segis are on the way, first batch is on the ground, we'll check them in a second. We want to get our genetics team working on Megalosaurus for the park, so we'll just set these guys over here to get the free wreck out of the way, Will we go check out the new little dudes. Our little dudes. Missing sand, okay. First things first, they need sand. Second thing, that's a pretty good looking little guy. Um... Yeah, no, that, that, I like this. This has this is green and orange back pattern on this like desert brown in this desert environment. It looks great. Um, yeah, fantastic. Sand. Where do I want to put the sand? I think I'm gonna not just like make the whole environment strictly sandy. I'm gonna do we're gonna do it kind of between the hills here a little bit. I think. Do it like this. Put in like a, a strip up in here, kind of. Delivery. 
Yeah, that way there's just like a little different, you know, vibe to things. All right, so I didn't even see what the which one that was before. Death Valley Rana. I hate that when you exit, it just rockets you into the sky like that. You are Great Sandy Letho, Great Sandy Rana. There's enough light here. I think we can basically tell what's going on. Great Sandy Pilophylax. This one's also really good. Pilophylax, I think, is my favorite pattern for these guys. The black and yellow looks really nice. Good lizard vibes. I like it. Great Sandy Letho. Great Sandy Papu. Papu's probably the second best pattern. Sonoran Letho. This one actually looks pretty good, too. This is this has a nice naturalistic combo. Like the reddish pattern with the reddish body makes that. That that's like a that's like a design that I could see in like Jurassic Park 1993. That's like a good like a good take on a film cannon color palette, I think, for this guy. Uh that was which number? What's that? You? Well, anyway, Death Valley Pilo Phylax. He looks very green. I think that's a weird lighting thing, because he looks very yellow to me in proper sunlight. Huh. Part of it's probably the combo of colors. Because he's got this kind of orange or yellow underneath. Looks so weird in the dark. Huh. Well, anyway. Yeah, very happy with these guys. They're great. Oh my god, he ate that entire fucking goat. The fuck? And then he, of course he has to sleep. This is me when I, like, eat an entire family's worth of Chinese food. And then I gotta sleep under a tree. For like 12 hours afterwards to deal with it all right medium carnivore is completed uh egg 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 got distracted distracted we're fine just just hatch go release run 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 fast 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 maximum listrosaurus speed finish that contract and then these guys i mean they haven't been eaten yet i'm gonna believe they're fine so we're directly over the target Contracts. Disease free is worth more than amenity. Aviary is worth even more, but has a cost. So I think disease free is the best profit because it's pure profit. Animals are living experiments. They are still deserving of the best care we can provide. Healthy specimens. Okay. Megalosaurus. Science. Six, four, and two. This is just the logistics specialist, which I don't know. If there's any research to do there, maybe fence. Nope, nine. Okay. Um, I think you can sit. We do still have this avian pox vaccine, but... Oh, we also have no money left. I didn't notice that. I mean, it makes sense. Um, 99, 96, 91 accommodation okay we need a hotel which is going to require more amenities uh something to think about where to put a hotel we got like a corner here that's kind of out of view we've got a kind of a gap here but no real way to cover it this corner this corner or the any of these corners kind of i think I think we'll put it here. And then uh, we'll build a Megalosaurus pen kind of around it. Ooh. Um, we can do large. I think we let it sit. We do large here. Um, 
and then that'll uh last a little longer maybe Come on now, guys. Don't be like that. Which one is this coming down here? Number nine. Death Valley Calcarum. Oh, yeah. Blue. I like the... Uh, so this is something I talked about in the, in the video I did about the DLC. You get, like, these patterns now. Maybe we had these before on some creatures. But it seems especially prevalent in this DLC, where it's like two-tone patterns, and then occasionally one of the two tones is like translucent or completely invisible. So this guy only has like these blue spots. And like the other splotching is just gone, which is really cool because it makes them look really distinct while still having like the same pattern. Um, very nice. Might have other ones on the ground here. Oh, I got my camera turned around. Also, Megalosaurus. So, we don't have the money for large hotels. Do we start on Meg? No, because he's almost a million bucks. All right, fair enough. Number 10, Great Sandy Rana. Yep, brown and yellow guy. Yeah, we can't all be winners. Is this 11? Sonoran Papu. Okay, that's another, another green and orange. Something about the eye like really evokes to me um like late 80s early 90s trodon depictions especially like the dinosauroid stuff like hyper intelligent trodon Ooh. i think it's just i don't know the style of the eye that that makes it like makes me think of that maybe the size too because trodon has pretty big eyes both in game and in the depiction i'm envisioning in my head that it reminds me of And you are 14. I think we missed it. Death Valley Pilophile. Eh, that is kind of a tint of green to that pattern, I guess. 13 is Death Valley Papu. Oh, no, we saw that, right? Oh, no, maybe we saw this Great Sandy Papu. Well, Death Valley Papu. The way. Outstanding is that there he goes well these guys were 21 appeal environmental needs seem pretty good interesting meet two of one is that counting a dead goat because there's only one meat feeder i never noticed that before Yeah, one of one prey because there's one prey feeder. It's weird though, because like the prey environmental requirement requires the feeder specifically to be in the territory or for them to have like edible dinosaurs that they can eat in the territory. But individual goats don't count for the prey need. Like if you have goats running all over, but the feeder's out of range, they'll still be mad. But apparently that's not true for the goat carcasses if that's what this is. Yeah, meet one of one now. The carcass is eaten or decayed. Huh. Which means you don't need a meat feeder for your scavengers if you want to have them like you can have them subsist off goat carcasses and have them occasionally be happy. But I imagine more often than not, there's not going to be a goat carcass. Also entirely dependent upon what they're with, right? Like if they're with a larger predator that just swallows the goat, there'll be no body from the main carnivore. They'll have to pack hunt to have something to eat. Uh, why is somebody dying? What have you done? Are you stuck? Are you stupid? Stupid. That's all. Well, he'll be fine. 
maybe there's uh, enough Dimetrodons that actually kind of need another feeder. That's probably going to be true with these Sega as well. They're probably going to need a second meat feeder, but they do have goats, so maybe they can make do. Um, 14. So 15, Sonor and Papurana. Not bad. Another Sonor and Papurana. Death Valley Pilo. Feel like, oh, we're back to one. Oh, yeah, yeah, because they're only eight per clutch, so they're 16. Great. Okay. Well, there we are. Uh, you are hungry. We'll have to keep an eye on these dudes. You're also hungry. Yeah, we don't know with these guys either how often they just fucking die. Like, Morose just fucking dies all the time. I notice right now these guys ain't running much. It makes me a little worried they might be like Morose and just end up eating shit. Oh, nice. <laughs> Big guy and little guy all eating together. Hold on. This is This is a Kodak moment. This is this is perfect. Whoops. I want to do this. I actually don't want to do capture in game because I just copy and paste after the stream is done. Alright. No, that's a nice nice like one two of the exhibit. I actually didn't really occur to me that animals that are different species could eat from the feeder at the same time. But obviously they can. This is one of those things I've like never really thought about. I'm sure it's happened a billion times in the parks. I've just never really, like, you know, paid attention. Usually it's small scavengers in with, like, a T-Rex. Okay, definitely there's enough starving going on here. We're going to put in a second meat feeder. I'm just going to slap it down right next to the first one. If we can. Try and align it. Constructed. Too close. I actually might want to put it this way. Just because of where the um, the thing is. Oh, that was a goat. Okay. I was like, don't chase my fucking Segas. No, he's chasing a goat. Alright, that'll work. Offset from the other one, but it's fine. See, people say you can't see these guys. You can see them just fine. So glad these guys are in the game, finally. It's been so fucking long. I've been, like, waiting since the first game when they added everything else from the JP brochure, except for that guy. It was just like, why? Why'd you only give us 14 out of 15 species, Frontier? But finally, five years later, they fixed it or whatever it is. It's not five years, but... All right. Awesome. Uh, we should we should wrap up here. Okay, that's enough gushing about uh, getting another the missing Canon ninety three species. So let's end on some research. We need big hotel. And uh, I guess we just need to dig up Megalo. Those. Oh, I was um. Yeah, vaccine research. That was the, that was the other thing I was thinking of. Uh, but you don't have enough logistics to do it solo, and I'm not going to push somebody over the edge for just that. So yes, that's it. Um, and our remaining person was not... Yeah, it's all welfare, so we can't do anything for research. So yes, let's leave this one here then.